Uh, I am gratified by your attendance here tonight. It's quite exciting to see the Kiva uh, full of people who I assume are interested in the history of our species. Now, some years ago, we had the momentous discovery of something called Lucy. And Lucy was a real breakthrough because she was the first really complete uh, human fossil uh, that came from a very ancient age. Uh, some of you may have heard of Olduvai Gorge. Olduvai Gorge is about 1.8 million years old at its bottom. But Lucy was 3.2 million years old and she represented one of the oldest finds at the time that anyone had ever recovered. Uh, there was great excitement about Lucy, but there was a major problem with Lucy. And that is everything about her lower limb that we could look at and study carefully told us that she was a complete upright biped who was well adapted to running and walking. And she clearly walked in a manner unrelated to the kind of locomotion that we see in living chimpanzees and gorillas. These animals use something called a bent hip, bent knee gait, and that gait pattern is very distinctive and it is very unlike the gait pattern of humans. But all we had at the time was Lucy and comparative anatomy. So the universal presumption was that we had evolved this kind of lower limb from an animal that had that kind of lower limb. But along came Artipithecus. Um, 15 years ago, Tim White and his crew, some of which are with us here tonight, um, recovered from a place called Aramis, uh, the materials that we now associate with a, a species called Artipithecus. And Artipithecus kind of had a world-changing aspect to it. We have been able to look at the skeleton, and what you see here is the pelvis of Artipithecus superimposed over that of Lucy. And one of the things that you see is the inferior part of the pelvis is chimpanzee-like, but the upper part of the pelvis is very Lucy-like, and so what you've got is a mosaic. It's an animal totally unpredicted and something that looks very unlike Lucy and very unlike a chimpanzee. So we're looking at an animal that never walked with a bent hip, bent knee gait, and an animal that was never adapted to vertical climbing. The really exciting thing came from the hand. If you compare the, uh, the hand of a chimpanzee with that of a human, the chimpanzee palm is heavily elongated. There are structures in it that are related to something called knuckle walking, which is forced on, onto chimpanzees because of their vertical climbing ability, but the hand of Artipithecus is much closer to the human hand in its construction. And one of the things that, of course, we thought for, for the entire period of, of human investigation of our own history is that we had evolved a hand adapted to tool making from a hand like that of a chimpanzee, which was adapted to upright uh, climbing. But in fact, we emerged 4.5 million years ago with a hand that was fairly well capable of making tools. When I got here to Kent, it was, uh, it was a very rich, rich program. And because not only was Owen Lovejoy here, there were a number of other faculty members who were absolutely essential to providing a sound education, not least of all Rich Mindel. Uh, it's, I believe it or not, I still hear his words 25 years after uh, he first uttered them. And it's, it's sort of scary, but they're still there, and they're still, they still provide value. Mark Seaman and the other faculty members that are here uh, that are at, at Kent. And so this really is a rich place that has been central to the understanding of human evolution, uh, human evolutionary research over the past 40 years. <laughs> Sorry about that, Owen. <laughs> so I'm going to provide a little bit of, of uh, an overview of uh, human evolution, and what we are is, <laughs> is now this is a joke, but we really are, we are part of this radiation of living African apes. Humans are of the African apes and finally got a chance to uh, uh, move outside of Africa and now occupy everywhere in the world. 
Well, beginning in 1992, we started finding fossils of Artipithecus romatus in Ethiopia, at first at Aramis and now another place called Gona, and we're starting to fill in a very essential piece of this human ancestry. And Artipithecus romatus is dated anywhere between 4.3 and 4.8 million years ago from deposits in Ethiopia. So this is what it looks like in the field area. And this is what referred to as old technology. I scanned the slide, so that's why the picture doesn't look so good. Because this was, I took this in 1992, and we're looking out across the grasslands of, of the Aramis Middle Awash project area. One of the things we want to point out is even though Aramis and the Afar is very, very arid today, it was more lush, and it was more wooded, and it was um, um, uh, had more watered than it, was, than it is today. So we're looking at a very, very different type of habitat today than we were when uh, Ramadis was uh, living four and a half million years ago. So this is, uh, this was taken back in 1992, and Bruce and I were uh, on the field project the very first season that we went into the Aramis age, 4.4 million year old deposits. And this area here referred to as the main hominid catchment, which is where we found the first fossils. And so that these three arrows represent three hominid fossils that we found in the very first field season. We've been searching for two and a half weeks. And so what we do is we see the team is scraping and looking around for other additional fossils. This was a very dense area of recovery for Romatus. And actually, just off the edge of the slide, we also found another dentition. And this was the very first year, 1992. And so here's, this is Bruce Latimer looking at this humerus that he has. He, no, he hasn't broken it. We just haven't glued it back together yet. And so here is a computer scan of the humerus. It's missing its distal end and its proximal end. But this was the first piece of postcrania or anatomy below the, the neck that we found of Artipithecus. Because usually in the fossil record, you find a, a tooth here, a broken uh, toe bone here. But what we find is Artipithecus arti, the skeleton arti, is unique like Lucy because we found so much of a single individual that we could then talk about, not about teeth or not about toes, but we could talk about individuals. And we could just look at the biology of single individuals. Now, when you go through the, the field area, this area is brutally hot. It's very, very hot, I'm telling you right now. But what we're doing is you have to overlook the heat and you, when you find a special fossil area, you have to go through and do something which is a crawl. And you get down shoulder to shoulder, you get on your hands and knees, and you pick up every piece of bone on this area. And it's very, very hot. And so what we're finding here is that each one of these pin flags represents an air, a bone that we have identified in a previous walk, walkover survey. So the arty skeleton, we found it in 1994. We continued its excavation throughout 94, 90, field season of 95, and the field season of 1996. Three field seasons to get this out of the ground. It took a long time. It was a delicate fossil, and it was hard, hard digging. This area here, we removed all this area down about two-thirds of a meter using dental picks and brushes. There's no shortcuts to this at all. We then published these in... Uh, science, and here is Jay Maternus' reconstruction of the skeleton, and now we flesh it out. And really what, as paleontologists, finding it is only half the job. Actually, it's less than half the job, because it's not what you find, it's what you find out. And so really that's what takes all of our analysis so long to, to do this analysis, to go from a series of fragments like this to a completely fleshed out individual who lives in a context four and a half million years ago. And so really, it <laughs> is a big deal. Okay. You know, we've said, the research team, even back in 1994 when we found the first fossil, we were pretty excited, but I think Biden did sum it up best. <laughs> well, thank you, Scott. You know, um, I've never been sitting so close to the screen when you showed that photograph of me. I think I was going full commando that day. <laughs> so we're going to have to maybe Photoshop that. Now, locomotion and the foot. Now, I know you're thinking, poor Latimer, they give him the foot. Paleo, paleopodiatry, you know? <laughs> well, it's actually very important because that's what you're standing on when you're walking. And you would never in a million years mistake those two animals. And it's not simply that, that camels don't wear argyle socks. <laughs> but nobody walks like that weird guy. I mean, that's a very peculiar way to get around. And think about it. The fastest human on the planet Earth, that guy Bolt. Can he, in a 100-meter dash, can he beat a rabbit? No. Can he beat a little dog? No. Can he beat a house cat? No. I mean, there's something about this way we walk that is very, very peculiar. 
Lucy's 3.2 million. Well, at 3.6 million in a site in Tanzania called Lightoli, we actually have footprints of a Lucy-like animal walking through volcanic ash. There are actually three of these animals. There's a little one that's Lucy size, and there's left, right, left, right, left, right. A larger one following behind, and a third individual coming and stepping in the bigger one's footprints. So it's not Bigfoot, it's just two superimposed prints. And these things are amazing, truly amazing. 3.6 million years old, and we have evidence of these things walking, and there are no handprints, just footprints. And footprints, footprints are very, very, in terms of humans, are very diagnostic. Now I'm gonna tell you, and I can say this with 100% certainty, nobody in this room has a foot that looks like that. <laughs> because if you do, you're not human. <laughs> now, that's, think about this, every primate we know of, other than us and our immediate ancestors, Every single one has a foot like this with a grasping big toe. Because following what Owen said, if you spend your time up in trees, you better be able to hold on with your feet. Because if you fall out of the canopy, you're not gonna contribute to the next generation. <laughs> so they all have these grasping big feet, big toes rather. So what, do we, what can we say about Artie? Well, well, whoa, well, whoa, well, Artie was a shock. Artie was not a Lucy. It's not even an old Lucy. Artie, and we're very lucky because we have so many foot bones, look at that big toe. The big toe sticks out on the side. I'm going to tell you that frankly, I never thought we'd find this animal, but we did. We found an animal that when it comes down to the ground, it walks on two legs, because we can, we can tell that from its anatomy, and, and Linda will be talking about that from the pelvis, but it does it in a way that it's using the four lateral toes, not the big toe. It's not towing off the way you and I do. So this is an animal that we have no model for. There has never been anything like this. And we're still working on it. But I mean, look at that thing. That is a very peculiar foot. So there's something rather ape-like about the lower half of, of Artie's pelvis. It's very much a hybrid. Again, something we didn't really expect to see. In evolution, we don't expect to see these uneasy transition moments because for the, that creature, they're awkward. They don't last long. The creature evolves in, a, in one direction or another, but the just trying out bipedality thing, it didn't probably last very long, so we were very lucky to find a great example of it. Okay, so human, Lucy, Artie, chimpanzee. There's the chimpanzee from the side. It looks like a knife blade. So immediately, what is common between the first three is things got shrunk down from top to bottom. That's called lowering the center of mass. Anyone in the room who's very, very tall knows if you're standing near, let's say, a balcony that has a low railing, you as a tall person, you're like, ah, you feel like you're going to tip over because your center of mass is high. It's important for a creature that walks habitually on two legs to have a lower center of mass. So I guess a chimp can rear itself up on its hind legs and move around a little while, but if it's gonna do that routinely, you wanna lower the center of mass. It's much more stable. So we don't have any slides that show any thundering conclusions, except to say we have several lines of evidence that really, really suggest that Artie was trying out bipedality, but still comfortable in the trees. And she had also adopted a, a kind of a social group where males were not fighting each other for access to females. And this stuff is the, the coolest stuff in the world, and I know it's gonna engender many, many questions. So there's one more slide. I believe it shows the people. Okay, those are the, the 46 people that kept a secret for 15 years. Thank you very much. <laughs>